fuck else I make? <laughs> like peach cobbler pancakes. Like, baby, this is a lot of good food, you know? Hey guys, it's your girl, Chef Joya, and welcome back to the long-awaited Say What? It's vegan. I know I've been gone for a while, but your girl is back, and I am coming to you with some of the best vegan recipes there is, and today is all about the brunch. I'm gonna be showing you some of the best vegan brunch recipes that's perfect for a girl's day, mother's day, any day that you wanna get out and you wanna have a statement piece to talk about over your food. All the recipes that you're gonna to learn today is in my cookbook, Brunch with Chef Joya, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with an amazing recipe, which is omelets in a bag. Now, omelets in a bag is such a crowd pleaser and it's so fun to do because you can make so many different omelets at one time and it's customized right for you. So if you have a group of friends or your family together and you know everybody don't like the same thing in their omelets, they can go around and choose these different toppings, put it in a bag, use their vegan egg, and put it in boiling water. 10 minutes later, voila, you have your own omelet. So let me show you how to do it. So I have different ingredients right here um, that I'm gonna use for my omelet. And two of my favorite omelets that I love to make is my Mediterranean omelet, which is in the cookbook. And then I also love a Southwest omelet. It doesn't take a lot of ingredients, but you can customize this as much as you want to. But so for my Southwest uh, omelet, I'm gonna use jalapenos, a little bit of vegan cheddar cheese, tomatoes, and some salsa. And for my Mediterranean omelet, I'm also going to use some tomato, some onions, some feta, and some spinach and mushrooms. Now, if you're allergic to mushrooms, by all means, take it out. But if you can eat it, I absolutely suggest that you try it. So let's go ahead and saute these veggies. If your guest or yourself want to just put your veggies directly into your egg mixture, you're more than welcome to do that. But when you saute your veggies, you add an extra layer of flavor and it gives you a chance to season it and get all those flavors to marry together. Now I'm gonna put mine in the same pan because I'm doing two different omelets only, but make sure you have a big enough saucepan to be able to do that. So I'm gonna start with my uh, Southwestern omelet. So I'm going to use a little bit of jalapeno. Now I keep the seeds in my jalapenos. If you're not good with heat, make sure you take those seeds out. I'm gonna use a little bit more because it's mine. I can do what I want. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of onion to that. Now my tomatoes and my sauce, I'm gonna use that for the end. And my cheese, I'm gonna put directly into my, into my uh, egg mixture. You don't wanna put your cheese in your pan, okay? And now for my Mediterranean one, I'm gonna add my spinach. Now you know spinach really wilts down, so use a lot. Use a little bit of red onion. That's a lot, <laughs> but it's mine. And then we're gonna add our mushrooms. Next, we gotta add a little bit of seasoning, so we can take a little sea salt, and a little bit of coarse black pepper, and that's all we need for right now. So we're gonna give this a quick little mix, and it's gonna be done sauteing in about one minute. All right, now that that's done sauteing, it's ready to go into our bag. Now you want to make sure that you use a Ziploc bag because they are BPA free. And I found that those are the only bags that do not burst in the water. Uh, you can try other brands, but if you do do that, I will suggest that you double up the bag. So we're gonna start off by taking some of our Just Egg mixture. I'm gonna give that a nice little shake. Now it does have some black salt in it, but we're gonna add a little bit more black salt. Now you find your black salt at the Indian market. Um, there is some that you can find on Amazon and I include a link below for you all too so you can get your black salt. But this is gonna give it more of an eggy flavor and taste, okay? So I'm gonna add a little bit of that directly to my mixture. And a little, a little bit goes a long way, so that's probably like an eighth of a teaspoon I'm using for the entire bottle, all right? And then I like to season, y'all know me, I like to season everything, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And we're gonna add it directly to our bottle. So we're gonna go ahead and add our mixture. Now we gotta shake it up really well. It does like smell like a devil egg. And so we're gonna go ahead and pour some of that mixture right into our Ziploc bag. And just depending on how big you want your omelet. So it's actually gonna be the size that this is right here. So I want mine to be a little bit bigger just because. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. And so this is gonna be my Mediterranean omelet, so I'm gonna take those toppings from my Mediterranean omelet. Let's get this bag open. 
and we're just gonna pop that right in here. Now remember the tomatoes and the feta cheese, we're gonna add that to the top. We don't want to, we don't actually wanna cook that. And you don't wanna cook the tomatoes or the sauce or anything of that nature because what that's gonna do is release a lot of water and it will take even longer for your egg mixture to set up. You don't leave, wanna leave any veggie behind. And we got it already seasoned so we don't have to worry about adding any more seasoning. So that one is good to go. Let's get the air out. Let's get this air out of here. Okay, Ziploc. <laughs> Ziploc don't wanna open back up. <laughs> We're gonna place this right into the boiling bag of water. Now, if this was for somebody else, they could put their name right here so they'll know exactly um, whose omelet is whose. So we're gonna put the lid on that and let us do its thing. And we're gonna get our other one ready. Add our peppers and onions. Now, if you wanna add black beans to this, you can do that as well. But I kinda like mine a little simple, my Southwest omelet, cause it's all about the salsa and the cheese and everything else that you put on it. <laughs> all right. And then we're gonna add our vegan cheddar cheese. Let's do a little bit more. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing. All right, so we have that. I'm gonna zip it up, make sure the air is out. And we're gonna toss this right into the water and we're gonna let this cook for 10 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes and our omelets are done. And the water has been bubbling. It's time for the moment of truth. Don't be nervous, I'm nervous. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take our omelet and we're just gonna Jiggle, 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 boom, right out of the bag. And look at there, look at that guys, look how easy that is. Woo, <laughs> don't touch it, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> We're gonna let him sit right there while we get the other omelet, okay? Now this is our soft western omelet, and we're gonna roll this one right out of the bag as well. Uh-oh guys, I spoke too soon. A little bit of, little hole got in the bottom of that, but it didn't do too bad. Still cooked very well, I believe. Boom, yes, there it is. Now let's go ahead and flip this over. Look at that guys, I'm so excited. And it's so easy. So for our Mediterranean omelet, let's go ahead and add our toppings too, okay? So we're gonna add our tomato and we're gonna add some vegan feta. And then we're gonna top it with some parsley. There you have it. Our Mediterranean omelet. Now let's get over to our Southwestern omelet. So we're gonna go ahead and use some jalapeno. Yes, I know I put a lot of jalapeno inside, but I want a lot of jalapeno on the outside. And this is absolutely delicious. We're gonna take some, let's take some of our cheese first. Use some of our vegan cheddar cheese. You can even find vegan Mexican style cheese out there. And I'll make sure I put links to all of this for you guys. And then we're gonna top it with some salsa. And if you wanna add some avocado to it, you definitely can add some avocado, some guacamole. You can completely make this yours, okay? Just depending on how much work you wanna put into it. And there you have it. These are our omelets in the bag. Who doesn't like booze and pancakes? I know I do. And we're gonna combine those two together and we're gonna make my bourbon peach cobbler pancakes. Now this dish is the star of any brunch and it's super easy to make. So let's go ahead and make it. So we got our pancake mix, and then we're gonna add our vegan buttermilk to it. Now to make vegan buttermilk is super simple. You can use any plant milk. I'm using unsweetened almond milk. And then I add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to it. And you let it sit for about five minutes until it curdles, and then you'll have your vegan buttermilk. So we're gonna add that right into our pancake mixture. And we're gonna use my whisk. Now this is my best friend. Say hi. <laughs> Don't talk about it, if you knew the stories and the times we had together, you would love it too. You're gonna to see a lot of my Mr. Magic Whisk, but we're gonna go ahead and whisk this all up together. <laughs> and get it all mixed in. Like, listen, I win awards, okay? I am, I am quite sure that this whisk is magic. It's been holding on with me for years, and I've never lost a competition, okay? So it's, it's in the whisk, it's all in the whisk. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get all in there in the nooks and crannies and add a little bit more buttermilk. As you see, I add a little bit in at a time. It's always easier to add in than it is to take away because if you end up, let's just say you have all your pancake batter made and you add all your milk into it and then, you know, it's too thin, you can't take it out. You'll have to make more pancake batter. So you have to make more of the dry mixture. So it's easier just to add a little bit more in there. So I got it to about the consistency that I want. See that? 
So we're gonna set this to the side while we make our delicious cobbler topping. For our cobbler topping, we're gonna start off with some vegan butter. Now, I don't measure butter, guys. I have measurements in my cookbook, but hey, just do what feels right, you know? So we're gonna add our vegan butter to our pot. Next, we're gonna add some brown sugar. Let's just add all that. Add our brown sugar to here. Then we're gonna add some granulated sugar, or you can add some palm sugar, coconut palm sugar. Now let's just say if you don't wanna use any granulated sugar or palm sugar, you're more than welcome to use agave nectar. What I, maple syrup is a little bit too strong for this recipe, but if you love that flavor, you go for it. And today I'm using frozen peaches because peaches are in season right now. So when you have fresh peaches, what you would do is you'll peel those peaches, you'll cut them and you'll add them to the pan just like this, but it's not in season. So we're gonna go ahead and use the frozen peaches. Now, Chef Joy, can you use canned peaches? Absolutely. It's just all in your preference of what you want to use. So let's go ahead and add our peaches to our mixture. And this is literally only gonna cook for about five minutes because it's that easy and that delicious, okay? Next, we're gonna add our bourbon. For those of you who do not drink, it is okay because the alcohol actually cooks out of it so you won't get drunk off this mixture. Now, if you were to add it at the end and take it off the heat, maybe that's a different story, but this is gonna actually cook out all the alcohol so you're just gonna have the flavor of the bourbon behind. So this is some bourbon I have in here, a little bit of cayenne pepper, lemon juice, and yes, I said cayenne pepper, um, but we have lemon juice, a little bit of sea salt, and some vanilla. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of our spice mix, which is nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, and a little bit of allspice. All right. And so we're gonna let this come to a, a low boil, and then we're gonna simmer it out for about five minutes. So let's go ahead and get started on our pancake. Mm -mm -mm. So for our pancakes, we're gonna go ahead and add some vegan butter. Now, I'm not gonna keep saying vegan butter, guys, unless you know that now. I might just say butter, but you know this is all vegan, okay? So we make a comment below, be like, is it vegan butter? Everything on this page is vegan, okay? <laughs> so let's go ahead and get that melted down real good. Like I said, I don't measure butter. It just, you just go with it. You know, the ancestors will tell you when to stop, all right? And then we're gonna use our little measure cup. I'm gonna use a half a cup. Or you can use a ladle if you want to. But I like using the measuring cup because it helps me actually keep my pancakes even. Other than that, my pancakes can be all different types of sizes, okay? Now, if it was just a brunch for myself, I wouldn't mind. But, you know, if I'm cooking for other people, I want them to be as neat as possible. So I'm just going to slowly pour it into our butter. And we're going to let it do its thing for about a minute and a half on each side. And you know when your pancakes are done because it starts to get brown around the edges. Everything bubbles up at the top. That means it's time to flip. Give it a taste. Girl, hey, <laughs> telling you, I need an award. I need a Grammy. I need a vegan food Grammy. Like, I know Grammy is for music, but listen, the food makes you want to sing. Listen. So, I use a lot of butter too because when I was younger, I used to put butter in the pan, flip it, and then put more butter in the pan and flip it again because you want butter all throughout your recipe, so throughout your pancake. So, I just put enough butter in there so I don't have to keep adding butter. So, you know, we want both sides to have enough butter. So it's time to flip this. So let's give this a nice flip. All the bubbles are here. And boom, yay. Ooh, look at that, look at that golden crust. Oh. Like, what color do you like your pancakes? Do you like your pancakes dark? Do you like them golden brown? Or do you like them super light and fluffy? Let me know. So now that our pancakes are done, we're gonna go ahead and add our delicious peach cobbler. Now this is absolutely amazing. This is exactly how I make my peach cobbler that I do with the crust. Instead, I just did it with the pancakes. And an extra touch that you can do to it right before serving is add some salted caramel ice cream or just any of your favorite ice creams and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. So I hope you enjoy this. We're gonna go ahead and get into our butter pecan chicken and waffles. Now, chicken and waffles is a staple here in the South, but I had to twist it and turn it the way I do, so we took butter pecan, and we're gonna make our chicken. Now, in my cookbook, I use oyster mushroom, and it's absolutely delicious, and the texture is perfect, but my brother makes the best vegan jackfruit fried chicken, so I was like, you know what, let me use my brother Akio's recipe for the vegan fried chicken. Just in case someone has a mushroom allergy, you'll be able to create 
the same recipe that's in my cookbook, just using jackfruit. So let's go ahead and get started. The jackfruit that we're gonna use is jackfruit and brine. Now there's so many different varieties and I'll put a link below so you can find some jackfruit if you can't find it in your local town. But you wanna make sure you get jackfruit and brine. Make sure you don't get it in syrup because if you do, it's gonna be way too sweet. And nobody ain't got time for that. Nobody's gonna wanna go ahead and eat it. So you wanna make sure you rinse it out. And the thing about jackfruit, it has this tangy flavor to it because it has been in a brine. So there's a couple different things that you wanna do to it for this recipe. I like to boil it in some chicken bouillon and make sure it's vegan chicken bouillon, guys. And then I also use my Moe's Cajun Spice. And I'll put that link below too. That Cajun Spice has all the seasons you need. It has your salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, celery seed. It has everything, paprika, everything that you need. So I has an all-in-one season. And I cook that for about 20 minutes and I let all those flavors absorb into it. And then I let my jackfruit cool off and I make my vegan buttermilk and I sit in my vegan buttermilk until it's ready to use. You will want it to sit for at least 15 minutes before you use it. But if you only got five minutes, do it for five. But mine's actually been sitting for a whole hour. So this is gonna be real good. So it's time for us to go ahead and create our batter. Now our batter is a seasoned batter that I already have done. And I wanna make sure I use a dry batter and a wet batter. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up a little bit more. And I like it to be extra fluffy. So I add a little bit of baking powder to my mixture as well. And of course you'll find all those ingredients in my cookbook. And I'm gonna add some club soda to it. Now what does club soda do? Club soda absolutely is a game changer. It makes your vegan fry anything fluffier and crispier and very light. So we're gonna open up this club soda. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> Listen, I'm right next to this pot of oil. I started to just twist it right off. That would have been so bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna make my wet batter. So I'm gonna whisk this right in here. And I'm gonna add a little bit at a time. Cause like I said, easier to add than it is to take away. And you wanna make sure you get to all the nook and crannies in here. So it may look like it's incorporated guys all the way, but there's always some dry spots. So make sure you get this whisk in here real nicely. Take your time and do it correctly cause it's gonna be worth it. So now that we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and take our marinated jackfruit and we're gonna put our pieces into our dry batter to start with. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that around. And I tend to try to keep the mess down a little bit. So I use, use one hand for wet, one hand for dry. And yes, Chef Joya did just put her wet, her dry hand in that wet batter, but it's okay, it was only a little bit, okay? <laughs> it's not foolproof, but it actually makes it a lot less complicated, okay? So we're gonna get that coated coat really well. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add it to our wet batter. Now you want texture to stick to it. So like I said, if it has a little bit more flour or buttermilk to it, it is all gonna pay off. You don't want wimpy little jackfruit chicken. You want nice, thick sized jackfruit chicken, right? This is called chicken and waffles, all right? So we can get our little pieces in here. Then we're gonna take our wet hand and we're gonna get all up in it. Just, just, just feel for it, just feel for it. You know, just feel for it. Give it a nice little massage. Don't break it up too bad. Nice, nice, nice. Keep your pieces whole. Look at that. Because you want to remember this batter is going to be part of your jackfruit. Now, if you are gluten-free, can you do this recipe? Absolutely. You just have to use a gluten-free flour. That is it. Okay? Do I recommend chickpea flour for this? No. <laughs> I don't like it. But if you like it, I love it. There's so many different uh, gluten-free flours. And I'll actually put one of my favorite ones in the link below. So you can see what I like to use when I make this for gluten-free uh, clients. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna toss this back into the dry. And you see I'm just pretty much tossing, I'm not messing with it too much. I'm just adding my jackfruit chicken right over here, toss a little bit, and move it to the side. Uh, we're gonna repeat this until all of them are complete. Now we got them done, y'all. They finally done. And seriously, it doesn't take that long. It's been about five minutes. We've just been coating the jackfruit chicken pieces. Um, and you just want it to be perfect, okay? And you'll see why. Once these get fried up, you'll see exactly why. I was taking my precious little time with it, even though it's not a lot of time. Anything not immediate is considered a little bit of time, okay? So we got that mixed up real well. Let me go ahead and wash my hands quickly. See, let me test it a little bit. Okay, I think it's ready. <laughs> so we add our couple pieces in here. And when I add my, anytime I fry anything, I like to do it in a clockwise motion. 
That way I can remember in which order that I put the chicken in there or anything that I'm frying. So I'm gonna put it in a clockwise motion. So I know I went that first, that's gonna go second, third. And we're gonna go around the pan. And you wanna make sure you don't overcrowd your pan. Now, even though we have all these pieces coated, we're not gonna stick all these pieces in here at one time, okay? Um, that'll overcrowd it, which will lower your temperature, which will allow it to get real soggy. It won't cook all the way, it won't be crispy, and that'll defeat the purpose, okay? Ooh, look how that looks already. Yes. Listen, my parents turned vegan when I was seven years old. We didn't have this type of thing, okay? <laughs> my mom had to, we would make our vegan chicken out of the satin, and we would, or we would use tofu, which today is still two of my favorite things to use, uh, besides my chicken and mushroom. And it's, it's more so of a favorite because it's a childhood memory, okay? So I still, I mean, this, wait till y'all see this. It's gonna be amazing. And as you can see, if you was just cooking this and one of your friends or anyone walked in, they wouldn't even know. They wouldn't be like, oh, it's vegan. You know, that's like a bite into it. Wait till you see it. <laughs> They're gonna be like, say what? It's vegan? <laughs> All right, so it's at the perfect consistency for me. It is a perfect golden brown color. Um, if you want a little bit darker, by all means, you can go darker. But I'm gonna start pulling these out in the direction that I put them in. And yes, I am using paper towel. That's how my grandma did it, that's how my mama did it, that's how my auntie did it, and that's how I'm gonna do it. I know, if you got a wire rack, go ahead and do that. But listen, I ain't never had no soggy chicken with paper towel, so it worked for them, it's working for me. <laughs> so we're gonna get our nice jackfruit nuggets out of here, and look at this. I mean, I'm telling y'all, y'all ain't seen no jackfruit chicken that look like this nowhere. Say, hey, YouTube, you done made your debut. <laughs> Cause this is how you make the best fried vegan jackfruit chicken. Now that our chicken is done, our chicken is done, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our cornbread jalapeno waffles. Now this is my very favorite cornbread recipe that I even have in my vegan soul food cookbook, but I went ahead and took that same recipe of cornbread and I'm gonna add some jalapenos to this. And y'all know I like it spicy. So I'm gonna add my jalapenos and I probably should've used a regular spoon to mix it, but I'm gonna use my ladle. <laughs> and I'm gonna mix it, all right? Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my waffle maker. I already greased it up real good. Make sure you get it real nice and greasy. Use some nonstick spray or butter, um, but I use some nonstick spray, and I have my batter right in here. Now, the key to a good waffle batter is to have it thick and creamy. You don't want it too thick to where it don't move, but you wanna make sure it's thick and creamy. So I'm gonna add that to it. You can spread it out a little bit. But I like mine to be a little odd shape, so I'm not gonna allow it to go all the way to the ends. Tilt a little bit more. And we're gonna close it up and let it cook. And it should cook for about two minutes, or maybe one and a half, two minutes. The light pops on when it's ready. I don't know the real time. <laughs> all right, our waffles is now ready. All right, look at this. Perfect golden color. See, I like the little shape. That's why I don't go all the way to the edges. So I'm gonna add my waffle in here, and then we're gonna put um, the rest of our mixture in, and it'll be good to go. So, we're gonna add some more butter. You know, can't go wrong with a little bit of butter, a scoop of butter right there. And then we're gonna add our delicious vegan chicken, our jackfruit chicken. There, look how beautiful they look. Gosh, yes. And you hear the crunchiness. And next, we're gonna take my butter pecan glaze. Now, this glaze is super easy to make. The full details you will find in Brunch It with Chef Joya cookbook. Um, but we're just gonna put that right on top of the baby. Look at this, look at this. Just say, say, just say a moment, have a moment of grace and prayer. Ooh, ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh wee. Look at ooh wee, ooh wee. <laughs> baby, <laughs> this. He fell over. He drowned a little bit in the butter pecan sauce. <laughs> that was a good drown. <laughs> and there you have it, my butter pecan chicken and jalapeno cornbread waffles. Now these are all of the final dishes. You can serve them with some biscuits, some roasted potatoes. You can even make my azuki bean sausage. And like I said, all these recipes are in my cookbook, Brunch with Chef Joya, so make sure you check it out. And let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. And if there's something that you want me to see next, please let me know so I can do it for you. And make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at Cooking with Joya. Ciao!